Hello, and welcome to our fireside chat on the topic of secure hybrid working and how Google has achieved this for both themselves and their customers on Workspace. Uh, my name is Sean McAndrew. I'm Head of Customer Success at Ancorus, who are a Google Premier Partner here in the UK. And I have the great pleasure of chatting with Dominic Parks of Google. Dom, please hello, say hello and explain a little bit more about what keeps you busy at Google. Hello, yeah, my name's uh, Dominic Parks. Uh, I'm a customer engineer in the UK team in Google, uh, working with uh, some of our best partners and customers out there and really helping them to understand more about what Google Workspace can offer, really. So, yeah, thank you very much and delighted to be here today. So, real. Okay. So, Dominic, cast your mind back a few years when you first joined Google. You received your propeller hat as a Noogler. What was your experience? You know, just a, you know, straightforward things. Did you get all the applications you needed installed on the first day? Well, yeah, I'm not sure if my memory is that long. It was about three years ago, but I'm getting a bit older these days. Uh, but for me, it was it. Uh, for me, it's actually the best start to any company I've ever had. It was it was incredible. You went along. You had a specific area and they set your apps up. Um, I did work at another company before and um, uh, you went in and it wasn't the greatest of experience with Windows and apps being installed. The, the big change for me was actually you'd, you'd selected your device up in front and I had this view of I need to check interoperability with apps on the device and I actually selected a MacBook because that just seemed to be what people are doing in this journey and we wanted to see if our solution would work with Mac um, because we know it will work with Chrome in that sort of regard. Um, and after a week, I was like, actually, I didn't install any applications on the device because it was all web-based. Um, and I just realized I had a really powerful device that was just running web apps. And it just makes your life a lot, lot easier than the traditional installing and updates and all those sort of things. So, yeah, but it's two phases, the technology, but actually the culture was really a really great experience as well. Yeah, and the Nougat hat, so sorry. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Have you still got it? I have. So uh, I'm not at home today. I'm working from a, a different office, but that's another conversation. So. <laughs> Great. OK. So casting our mind back, um, not as far as that, but back on the 23rd of March uh, last year, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson ordered all UK citizens to stay in their homes in a bid to stop the spread of the coronavirus. From a work perspective, this meant that travelling to work was only for jobs where it was absolutely necessary and could only be and could not be done from home. So apart from missing out some great lunches, and I've been fortunate to share some of those in the Google Canteen, what did this mean for you, Dominic, from a from a work perspective? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question as well. So um, I think the biggest thing is because, um, you know, you can just work from anywhere on a web browser um, and actually on any device in terms of if you're authenticated on that device as well, which will occur a bit later on. It just meant I could just carry on working exactly as I was before. And the other thing we do is this this capability of in work, we're not there anymore, but you can get a device, you boot it up, put your sort of credentials in there, you can carry on working. Um, and for me, that was a big sort of change and just having the capability to have meet conferences, et cetera. Uh, but it was also, it was kind of like, we have an office based culture, but you can work anywhere. And so you can be at home for a day or so and work in that way. And that was really incredible. Um, and, and for me, um, I'm caring for my dad at the moment, and we've got a week respite, so we're at a second home we sort of got, um, actually in Ludlow, in Shropshire, and this sort of way. And it just enables me to come up here and work in that way as well and have a bit of a break. But I think this is becoming the new normal, and coming back to the office and how you balance that is a big thing. I think we're all going to be looking at the next sort of coming months, really. Yeah, and I think the, the cultural and sort of personal aspect is, is something that, you know, not necessarily technology can solve, but it's it can certainly ease. It can take away the... The, you know the speed bumps that we, you know we'd say um i guess from a technical perspective from a you know an organizational perspective um and and, and again you know the topic of today is, is looking about that secure hybrid workspace um i think it'd be worth um <clears throat> looking at something called the perimeter now I know a lot of IT information security bots talk about the perimeter and, and how enforcing working from home and the move to the hybrid working model, um, this perimeter has now disappeared. I mean, in, in layman's terms, you know, just so I can understand, can you explain what perimeter actually is and what it, what it means for work, Dom? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's a great philosophy and Google have been doing this for some time. Um, and, it, and it's really saying you don't trust anyone wherever, wherever they are, the devices. So you always have to sort of take that into account. 
Um, so it's putting multiple levels of security and having AI as a key part of that. So wherever you're working or whatever you're doing, you've got a layer of security. And for me, the next thing is, you know, as I think as people are working at home as well, uh, from that perspective, you need to make sure that's a secure way of working. So you need to look at the content and, stop, you know, manage what they're sharing and get visibility and have reporting and all those sort of key elements which we're getting into. Great. I mean, Dominic, I mean, I've worked with other organizations and they have clever stuff like VPNs, firewall, antivirus software, you know, they update, you know, we protect, protect users and data. Um, sort of, why is that different? Why, why isn't that isn't effective? Um, yeah, you've got a great question, really. So uh, I think one of the things we get into, and I've experienced this with, with other solutions, is it's that view of the perimeter is really gone, as per, to, per the other slide. So if you just put the firewall there and manage content coming in, you know, people are working around ways of getting around that. So you're not necessarily going to be protecting people with a firewall. So it has to become part of a ubiquitous sort of solution. Um, and the other bit with firewalls, if you start to put all your traffic down the firewall um, or the VPN to a particular firewall and it works in that way, typically organizations haven't scaled in that way. So when they have everyone having to work from home, they can't get the throughput and those sort of things. And our solution is really saying it's designed to be secure wherever you are. You don't have to configure a VPN in that way and get the benefits from it. And, and then, so that, that makes it, sorry, that makes it less complex from the user's sort of perspective as well, which means you great, get all the great sort of security capabilities. Yeah, and I mean, I've heard, uh, you know, ex-colleagues talking about how, you know, how frustrating a connection on a video conference, you know, which we were used to doing back to back, you know, at the height of the lockdown over a VPN, you know, so they were having to turn off the VPN to go on the video conference and then they couldn't access the document they needed. Um, so again, I think, Again, we were very fortunate being on Workspace um, that we didn't have to contend with that. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you touched on it. So over a decade ago, you know, Google developed something called Beyond Corp based on the Zero Trust security model. Can you explain what Zero Trust means in a bit more detail? Yeah, so, so for me, it's saying you're moving away from really a lot of admin sort of views of controls and firewall to sort of point, point solutions. So you're really taking the approach that, you, you know, there is that anyone, wherever they are in your environment could be hacked. So from that point of view, you're leveling, leveling or putting additional securities in there. So it's taking it around from the, you know, the network level to actually go to individual employees as well. And, you know, assessing there and what they're doing and the activities, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, every company is not a Google, are they? You know, so how could a, you know, a normal company, um, you know, afford to invest in all the infrastructure and development that's obviously needed to create their own zero trust environment, you know, especially even, you know, practically when they can't go back uh, to their office full time, you know, how could they achieve this? Yeah, so so we launched um, Beyond Corp Enterprise. So this is our sort of go-to-market version of what we do. Uh, probably about two years ago, when it started, it didn't quite have all the features you need. We're now catching up and we're getting, well, we're providing the features that we've got to the end user as well. So you can start to move to this solution where you can have a, basically a, a zero trust type model. You don't have to install firewalls in that perspective. We do a lot of the firewall and, you know, to checking for uh, antivirus actually for the communications going through us. But you can start to manage access into your applications, et cetera, from Google itself. You can actually do on-premise applications as well. So there's a, a beyond corporate sort of solution for that. So from a cost perspective, it's very easy to get on board. And actually most customers have this already for their, for SAML apps. So any app services in the cloud, you can start to manage those as well. So you can really start to get on this journey and simplify your identity solution. So, yeah, and then that's just with you know a workspace account as well gets you on you know the, for the first step on the on the on board as well. Absolutely. So I'm saying that. So I guess what we're saying here is that with our experience over lockdowns, I'm guessing most organisations are reevaluating their network and access architecture um so you know from what you know what we're aware it's not a simple case of beefing up the vpn links and buying extra vpn licenses because that's not going to that's not going to solve it it's not it's not moving in the right direction is it yeah correct i mean yeah i mean you can actually start to deploy the stuff we've got with uh with our our beyond corp solution and for me it's more than just licenses as equipment 
uh, and it's you know they're designed typically for large files and not designed for voice video with you know these sort of communications and suddenly if you funnel everything down this link you need to scale up your network capacity and it becomes quite hard to do um, and actually just moving to google workspace where we have these sort of communications and video etc can offload a lot of that traffic so there's something called split vpn uh, and if you do have to have some vpn that can really help you anyway so i really encourage people to start the journey uh, and looking at this sort of solutions. Great. So, I mean, <clears throat> not everyone may be aware of this, but I mean, Google Workspace benefits from the same security posture that Google runs on. So, you know, if you're a Workspace customer, you know, we're working off the same platform as you, aren't we? And we're benefiting from that. Yeah, yeah, great point. So, so for me, when we start to look at how secure this is, you, we're really making, you know, we've got services in Google that we've had for some time and we're making them available to you. So when we productize this, we're thinking about how's, you know, what's the best way of getting it out there. And some of the key points here, if you know, it says zero there, um, and this is the amount of uh, hacks we've had that have been successful in terms of getting the passwords and the identity when we've got this second, fa second factor sort of verification sort of taking place, um, which is which is amazing. So, and also in terms of, you know, the engineer of the network, you as an organization can buy into this if you're 10 or 20 users and get the massive sort of global scale as well and the network and the performance and, and these types of things. And I, yeah, it's pretty amazing in terms of what we can offer. Great, yeah. I mean, you've touched on 2FA and we'll, we'll cover that. So I think it's probably worth having a look at a few of the features, the workspace that, you know, the help uh, an organization protect both their users and their data. Um, probably one of the, you know, the most fantastic resources in uh, the admin console and the enterprise version of workspace is the security center um you know the, one of the fir uh, one of the pillars of that is the security health so this gives you uh, a view on your security posture across your domain um it rec it gives you the recommendation from google on what uh, you know the most secure setting could be um and again these are guides they're not you know, it's not a competition to have all the recommendations applied because they may not be applicable for your, for your organization um, but these update as well so when new features get put in place into google um the security health area will recommend what the setting uh, should be applied based on how you've got your domain set up. Now, Dom, uh, two other elements are the security dashboard and in the investigation tool. Maybe walk us through, you know, a typical example of what you can see on the dashboard, what gets reported, and what actions an admin can take. Yeah. Um, so, so for me, I think it's really, as we said to start off with, we were saying, you know, we're going to this hybrid way of working. We need to be secure. We need to find out what people are doing in their environments and see, you know, with GDPR, I know we're not part of the EU in the same way, but we're going to have rules like that taking place and the appropriate level of security we need to have. And a lot of businesses are working with Europe as well. So we need to have a process in there to actually go through and the security health can really go, this is my security posture, this is how I set up. The other bit we get into is, I think phishing is getting more and more common, which is one of the examples here. So for example if a phishing attack comes in how do you work out what's going on when someone reports it how do you find that so one of the nice things you get here is a security dashboard and this gives you a really nice summary of what is taking place in your environment and it launched about again about two years ago uh, but we get more and more capabilities coming in here uh, chats coming into here etc cetera, etc cetera. it's a really nice way if you're going i've had an incident let's look at my entire environment and find out what's going on in a visual way because we're visual people we're not you know we chat a bit it's talking but a lot of it's actual visual about what we're doing and the empathy there so dashboards is a good way of finding out what's going on there so an example investigation you know if someone's put a phishing email in one person supported it you can look at the content of that mail and then do an investigation and say let's look at every single person in that environment who's got that message and then you can put an action on it to say let's just put that straight into quarantine or let's get that and actually say, based on that, these are all the people with second verification that's not been enabled. So they could be the people you need to reset all their passwords for, because if someone's got their password and identity, they could hack in. And the next stage is saying, actually, if, has any, have any documents been shared externally? So in that point, you can then revoke that external should or sharing capability after you change the password, and then you can remediate and respond to that. So what we're seeing here is companies are saying this might take us two or three days when we've spoken to them. And we're really saying, you know, this takes 10, 15 minutes now. 
So it really speeds up your response, which is what you part of what you want to do. And the other point with the dashboard is what you typically see if you get general sort of behavior. So it drop down at Christmas and weekends with sharing documents. If you suddenly got that spike, it's very easy visually to see, okay, something different has happened. Do we know what's going on here? And these tools are really about allowing you to find out what's going on and the impact to your environment. Yeah, and 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 Dominic, you know, the, the customers who uh, you know are using Security Center, um, you know, they see the benefits that you see, and that two to three days is not an exaggeration. You know, I've worked, um, you know, on other systems where that's been a reality. You know, and you're trying to track what's happened uh, with a potential breach, and you need to get that information in a very timely manner, um, and with Security Center, you've got the tools to do that. And it's also collaborative as well. So uh, typically you may have different teams working on, one may do the admin and provide it to the InfoSec team to do the investigation. Uh, within Google Security Center, it's all brought together. So that initial uh, analysis, uh, and again, it's reported, you're not relying on your end user to report it. Um, you can proactively um, capture these when they were happening, um, and then you can save that as an investigation for another team to take on. Um, so you're not taking information out and putting it into another system or emailing it on and, and all the delays that uh, are subsequent to that. One of my favorite, probably perhaps not best well-known features within Enterprise Workspace is the security sandbox. Um, this effectively provides additional level of anti-malware protection over and above, uh, you know, the conventional detection. Um, and that's conventional detection in Google, I mean, which is over and above, again, uh, a hell of a lot of the competitors' uh, products. Um, but Dom, can you explain a little bit more about how Security Sandbox works? Yeah, I mean, so I think for me, we're getting more and more people are thinking about how do I move to this, you know, secure way of working. And Google natively has loads and loads of capabilities around phishing and seeing what's going on an antivirus and we've got this really nice chart that shows about 20 things on it that are taking place uh, but one thing this is saying is you know with the opening up of the internet we've got more and more and more people actually having the capabilities to actually develop viruses and we've got countries where there is no um, impact to people if they get caught so really it's very easy to take a, a, a bit of malware a virus and actually recompile that and then it as, isn't picked up for these anti um uh, well, antivirus scanners so for me this is actually going to run the attachments that you've got there in the cloud and actually see if they've got any anonymous behavior in there so you can say if there's something that's a bit dodgy you can actually start to block them and what we're seeing is customers are thinking about rather than these third-party security tools you can actually move to you know um, to a google solution end-to-end -end. and that can actually improve the capabilities as well because we've got a better understanding of where it's come from and the IP addresses rather than going through another system and that's sort of obscuring some of that information. And this is what we use in Google to actually um, really provide the highest levels of security. And, you know, we're pretty secure in terms of what we've got. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. But the, another point, I guess, from a, from a user perspective, Dominic, I, you know, working, um, you know, with a, a, another product, and having to buy that second, you know, uh, second tool to do that email security, um, there's a change management aspect to it, where people receive a notification from the third party tool, and then they don't trust it. You know, is that you know? Is, I know I use X Y Z three six four, but actually this notification is coming in from Dimecast or something. You know, can I trust it? Should I click the link to check and approve it? Uh, and again, I think with Google's approach with having the, you know. The, you know, great security built in, but also a cons you know a consistent user interface, so that you know um, Google will flag an external email. It will warn you when you're emailing externally. Uh, it'll detect when uh, someone is emailed with a similar name that's in your domain. All things like that that are very sort of soft elements, but for a, you know a, a new user who's had no training on the system, you know, it's very obvious to them. Uh, and again, it reduces that chance of phishing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, change management is a massive part of security, keeping many people up to speed, running sort of events and how they can be linked into your own environment as well. Um, so yeah, really good point, really, sir. Um, uh, you know, the other thing is people putting Outlook in front of it. Um, obviously, you've got to upgrade Outlook to get the, but it's not going to provide all the banners popping up and all the other great stuff. And yeah, keep it simple is my view and give a nice, nice experience. Yep, yeah, yeah, definitely. So I know we, we've talked about blocking unwanted stuff coming into uh, you know, our domain, 
Um, what does Google have to prevent data leaking out? Now, I know sometimes users can share unintentionally uh, sensitive content outside organizations, and this might include, say, for the UK, national insurance numbers, credit card numbers, or you know, even health-related information that shouldn't be shared externally. Um, I'm guessing this is where Google's data loss prevention comes in. Yeah, I mean, as we said, it, it, if people are in this hybrid environment, they're working away from home. This is a critical part of that. How do you manage them? You no longer look over the shoulder. So this is actually a key part of that. And also some of the training capabilities. Um, and we, this is, it can be applied to, there's, there's the GCP solutions, the cloud platform generally, and it's the same sort of AI that's taking place there. Um, and enables you actually to simply say, okay, with PI information, if you, someone tries to share huge amounts of credit card details with a, you know, a, another account, it can pick that up and block it or warn you, and you can put different levels in. So absolutely key for sort of making sure your organization information is secure. Yeah, I mean, one of the really powerful features that I've seen is you can set keywords. So if you've got a special project that you're working on, you know, Project Armadillo, you can set up a rule to actually detect when somebody's uh, typing that into an email uh, that may be going externally and just warn that user that, you know, should they really be sharing that sort of uh, sensitive information? Yeah, so for me, it's a, a, a general sort of approach in terms of keep it simple as you can, then you do the general rules and then you can do the really specific, but, you know, make it simple as you can and, and it'll benefit your organisation. Sorry, Sean. That's all right. No, no. So, I mean, hijack prevention is something that you touched on earlier. Um, and I think uh, if we could if we give a recommendation to anyone, irrespective of what system they're using, Dominic, it's the two-step verification, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. So this is a massive thing when I joined. Um, it blew my mind, really. So it was saying I never have to change my password because I've got second verification. So we got given a key on our first day and he said, you put it into the device whether it's your mobile phone or you know your laptop, et cetera, and then you can connect into this environment on a new device. And it means if someone does get your password, um, you know they can't use it on a device because they haven't got the key to sort of drop it into there. Um, we do recognize that you know, we're information workers, so we're more high value. So we've got a range of different second two-step verification capabilities or multi-factor authentication as it's called as well. Um, so at the top here on the top, Right, you can actually see this as mobile phone authentication as well, which is another way of doing it. And you can install an app and get that working. Probably better than using a you know a mobile phone number because some people have been known to hack that as well. But I would recommend this. And um, NIST, who do security, are moving away from this. Redo your password every six months or so. Um, and I think it makes it a lot more secure and it's easier for the users as well. That's great, and it's a great point around the the, the mobile phone element to it as well, because you know, as we've seen with the pandemic, there's such a reliance on frontline workers, and again, with the new workspace frontline SKU, um, this is a complementary security uh, feature that's built to the the tool that they use day in day out, the mobile phone, without having to remember to you know to carry the key, uh, and that's based on you know the secure chip that's built into those those Android devices. So. A little birdie's told me about something called context aware access. Uh, I'm guessing this is closely related to uh, BeyondCorp Zero Trust model. Absolutely. So, yeah, so I, this is one of my most favorite features, uh, to be honest with you. So, it, it's really saying it's before you're allowed into the, into Google or the ISIS third party identity. So, you can use this on third party apps as well. We want to make sure where you're coming from. Uh, and you can do it differently for operational unit. Oper yeah, operational units. So you could say, okay, for these group of people, maybe they're frontline workers, they don't need to be accessing from outside the UK, you know, from that point of view. Or they don't need to be accessing from China or Korea or these sort of places. And you can put gradually, you know, graduations of rules. And it gives you that another, um, a great way of having another layer of, uh, sort of security in there as well. It's also linked into GCP. So the underlying engine is the same. So you'll see the rules you build on workspace actually being in GCP and sort of vice versa. So for your entire apps in your organization, you can have a common approach to that. And actually, because you can link it into your on-premise apps as well with you know GCP beyond Corp, um, you can have those same rules in place there. But for me, it's sort of kind of saying, what's the posture in your device? Is it encrypted? Uh, where are you accessing from, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we are linking to a third party apps for security as well, and it's coming out onto mobile phones. So 
for me, it's a great way of having that extra layer of security to find out where are people accessing and what's the posture of those devices. Yeah, and we're, you're moving away from that. This is our office. This is the headquarters. And uh, and again, if you're in those offices and you physically were able to plug in, um, you've got the open, you know, you've got the keys to the um, you know, keys to the house, don't you? But with context aware access, again, it's based on the rules that you want, whether it's device, based on your user, your role, and what you should be accessing and, and where you should be expected to access it from. Uh, so again, I think, as you say, this is really you know, one of the, the, the stellar products uh, within Google. Now, <clears throat> Dom, I'm not sure whether you slipped this one in by, by mistake. I, I don't managing, think Windows, me, so. <laughs> managing Windows devices in Google. Yeah, so yeah, we in Google we don't have many Windows devices. We do have a few actually. But some of your um, customers do, don't they, Dominic? Yeah, a, a few of them. Yeah, we we do believe there's probably about ninety percent market share or something like that. But yeah, it's so one of these. One of the main questions we get is how do we, you know, part of this, how do we move away from our complex Active Directory on-premise sort of solution? How do we move to this, you know, cloud-based solution where everything's in the cloud and it works with identity there? And one of the things you get into is how do I manage that for my Windows devices? So there's a couple of things we actually can do there. Um, over here we can see there's a big G group of G, pardon me, for the Google login actually into uh, your services or your Windows device, sorry. So we can actually have the login into your Windows device being Google Identity. So yeah. just to stop you on that one, Dominic, so you can yeah. log into a Windows device and it doesn't have to be added to your domain. It don't have to have an Active Directory account. Correct. Yeah, it can be completely on the Google Identity in the cloud. The other bit we get into there is actually, well, OK, well, you can log in there, but how do I manage that device? How do I enforce policies? And we've actually got the capability to manage those policies actually within Google um, Cloud uh, solution as well. So it's more than that. It's just login and actually managing. So do you want to turn off the uh, uh, the camera? Do you want to enable that? Do you want to disable, more importantly, the devices are on the side so people can't put flash drives in and, you know, and take that information that you own away as well? So for me, it's really trying to lock down what that device can do. It does have to be Windows 10 and above, and you can actually manage... Um, via um, installation in terms of MSI files. You can manage those are going on. You can say you have to have BitLocker. Uh, you can enforce the updates as well. So there's a range of pieces we can get and this nice level of security. Obviously, we'd love it if people use Chrome. So, But we recognize some people quite like their Windows devices. Well, it's, it's like you've been reading the slides, Dom. So I know <laughs> we're, we're, we're really close to finishing our chat, um, but while we're on the on the top of the dice, I thought I'd call out something that I'm sure would interest our you know, end user compute managers, especially over the pandemic period where access to offices were restricted. And in some cases, those key personnel, you know, personnel who would ordinarily build, image, and put new um, machines on the domain before hand them out weren't, weren't there. Now, Last year, uh, and again, I've got you know a personal interest in Chrome. Um, Google, in association with a lot of the main manufacturers that you're you, you know you're familiar with, actually put together something called zero trust enrollment for Chrome devices. Um, so this means uh, today, if you've got a Google domain, um, and irrespective of uh, you know availability of users being able to go into offices. Um, you can order a zero touch enrollment device uh, from your supplier. Um, it's linked to your domain. So when it gets delivered, it can get delivered to the, you know, the home address. All they need to do is log in with their Google Workspace account um, and that's it. They didn't have to build it. They didn't have to enroll it. Um, it's automatically managed by your domain. And I think this is a really powerful um, tool and, and process um, cutter that is going to save organizations a hell of a lot of pain, um, but also, um, you know, being able to enable their users, you know, new users coming on board. Um, and, I, you know, I've seen it from a lot of Googlers as well. Um, they haven't been into a Google office yet, you know, so this is the ability to be able to give them a secure device um, <clears throat> from day one, you know, not have to mess around. I, I think the other great thing on that is um, in terms of Chrome devices, we actually bought a company called Neverware. Uh, and it does mean you can actually take out your old Windows devices that probably aren't running that well on Windows, install Neverware on them and Chrome OS and get them working in this environment as well. So it's a great way of saving a lot of money for your company, especially at the moment where, you know, money's tight, let's put it bluntly. 
Um, so it's a great solution and it's very secure as well. Yeah, and we, we have a great customer, Hackney Council, uh, who did that at the start of the pandemic. You know, they, they were able to, uh, they're, they're already a big Chrome OS customer, uh, but they were able to re-platform um, some very aging Windows devices um, with Neverware uh, and get them up and running with uh, managed, secure uh, Chrome OS uh, on those old devices. Now, it's been great chatting with you today, Dom, and I know we've only scratched the surface of some of the features of Google Workspace uh, that can, you know, go together to create this, you know, ultimate secure hybrid working environment. I know that a lot of organizations uh, are considering not only how fit for purpose, how cost effective, uh, but ultimately how user friendly and integrated their current IT projects are. Um, and I guess from a Google Workspace uh, perspective um, there are a number of third-party products I guess where you could either remove uh, or at least reduce the need for it and I think probably if I you know if there's any sort of call for action from you know from this session is um, is to really you know reach out to, to us to to discuss what could be achieved um, with that integrated workspace functionality and see where you could save money but also uh, I guess deliver a more unified uh, and user-friendly uh, experience. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just take this opportunity to thank you again. It's been a great chat with you. And I always always learn a little bit more from, from the chat. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. It's great to attend the session and uh, look forward to doing it again, really. So, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Dom. Thank you very much. Cheers. Take care. All right.